Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome United States Senator of Florida, Marco Rubio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't say polo. Don't say polo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The last few days remind us that the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind is in the hands of God. We were brought to the precipice of the abyss and by the hand of God, reminded of what truly matters in our lives and in our country. This thing we do called politics, it matters. It's not unimportant. But it is our people who was, must always matter the most in everything we do. By giving voice to everyday Americans, President Trump has not just transformed our party, he has inspired a movement. A movement, a movement of the people who grow our food and drive our trucks, the people who make our cars and build our homes, the people whose taxes fund our government and whose children fight our wars. Americans like Corey Comparatori. He was, the former, he was a former fire chief and a loving husband. He was described as the best dad a girl could ever ask for, as a man of God who loved Jesus fiercely and looked after members of his church. Corey was one of the millions of everyday Americans who make our country great. He wasn't rich, he wasn't famous, and the only reason why we know his name and story now is because last Saturday he shielded his wife and daughter from an assassin's bullet and lost his life the way he lived it, a hero. For those still want, wondering who are in the press and many watching at home, these, these are the Americans who wear the red hats and wait for hours under a blazing sun to hear Trump speak. And what they want, what they ask for, it is not hateful or extreme. What they want is good jobs and lower prices. They want borders that are secure and for those who come here to do so legally, they want to be safe from criminals and from terrorists. And they want for our leaders to care more about our problems here at home than about the problems of other countries far away. There is absolutely nothing dangerous or anything divisive about putting Americans first. Those who are offended, anyone who is offended, about putting America first has forgotten what American is and what American means. 
American isn't the color of our skin or our ethnicity. Americans are, are people as diverse as humanity itself. But out of many, we are one. Because as the life story of our next Vice President, J.D. Vance, reminds us, we are all descendants of ordinary people who achieved extraordinary things. <laughs> who do we come from? We come from pioneers who ventured west to chase their dreams and slaves who overcame bondage to claim their right to the promise of America. We come from exiles who fled tyranny in search of freedom and of immigrants who left behind all they had and knew because they could not be or achieve God's purpose for their life in the nation of their birth. That is an American. And putting Americans first must be what this election is about. When President Trump was in the White House, Americans had more money and lower prices. Our borders were secure and our laws were enforced. Iran was broke, the Taliban stopped killing Americans, and Putin didn't invade anyone. Now, under Biden, high prices devour paychecks. Criminals and drugs are allowed to flood into our country and terrorize our people. And Iran has money to support terrorists. The Taliban humiliated us in Afghanistan. And not one, but two major wars have broken out. My fellow Americans, the only way to make America wealthy and safe and strong again is to make Donald J. Trump our president again. Our country has been injured injured by the bad decisions of weak leaders. But now, though bloodied by our wounds, we must stand up and we must fight. Fight not with violence or destruction, but with our voices and our votes. Fight not against each other, but for the hopes and dreams we share in common and make us one. And fight for an America where we are safe from those who seek to harm us on our streets and from abroad. And we will not be alone in this fight, for leading us in this fight will be a man who, although wounded and facing danger, he stood up and raised his fist and reminded us that our people and our country are always worth fighting for. It is time, it is time to put our country and our people first again. And if, to do, and if we do, together, we will make our people wealthy again. If we do, together, we will make our country safe again. Together, we will make Donald Trump our president again. And together, we will not just make America great again. We will make America greater than it has ever been. Thank you. God bless you.